Okay. Uh, five, four, three, two. One. Hi there. Uh, this is a, a public information meeting uh, through the County of Kings to uh, uh, planning application for a minor MPS amendment to enable land use bylaw text amendment to permit limited residential development on properties with without road frontage located in the resource N1 zone. And the applicant's uh, name is uh, Lisa Conrad, file number 2102. Uh, online meeting information uh, meeting, 30 days commencing period will be September 2nd to October 2nd, 2021. Um, we'll start our agenda and I will welcome you. My name is Tim Harding, uh, Councillor District 5. I'm chairing this meeting for today. Um, the councillor, that uh, I'm reading this is getting a little mixed up, but um, uh, we, we, we will host and review the uh, planning review process uh, to for the information uh, for the public when the municipality has received an application uh, that may be in the community's interest. Planning staff explains the policies under which council may consider the application and the criteria used to evaluate the proposals. No evaluation or decision has been made at this point. The information meeting also allows neighbors and community members to ask questions and provide early comments via phone or email, 30 days commencing period online. Okay, uh, so my name is, Going to saying it again, Tim Harding, and I would like to introduce Will Muscat, the planner that is uh, looking after this today. And the applicant, of course, is Lisa Conrad. So Will will be doing a presentation. I guess that's where you step in, Bill. Uh, I mean, Will, sorry. So uh, you'll be doing a presentation now? That's correct, Councillor Harding. Um... Bear with me one second while I upload the presentation to the screen. So as Councillor Harding mentioned, this is a public information meeting concerning a minor MPS amendment and accompanying land use bylaw text amendment application. My name is Will Robbins Mushcat. I'm a planner with the municipality of the County of Kings. And the PIM recording will be available uh, to view on the municipality's website from September 2nd to October 2nd, 2021. The purpose of the meeting, just to briefly reiterate, is to inform the public of the application at hand. It is to explain the planning policies that enable this application to be considered and is to receive preliminary feedback from members of the public. Please note that no opinions have been formed on this application to date. To provide some uh, background context uh, to the proposal, Lisa Conrad has applied to legalize a residential dwelling located on PID 55123764 through a text amendment to the land use bylaw that would permit residential development on properties that do not have road frontage. There is currently no policy in the municipal planning strategy that enables councils to consider this text amendment. And on May 4, 2021, at a meeting of council, Council authorized the CAO to direct staff to investigate the development of specific criteria for enabling limited residential development on properties within the resource and one zone that lack road frontage. This is a map of the municipality of the County of Kings. You'll note a red circle that's appeared on the screen and that's the approximate location of the subject property within the boundaries of the municipality. This is an aerial photograph of the subject property. You'll notice that it is outlined in red. The subject property is approximately 40 acres in total area, and it is accessed via a right of way, which extends from Canaan Road, approximately 2.1 kilometers, uh, traversing a number of properties uh, to the subject property. And a number of property owners uh, have uh, access granted through this right of way to access their properties, including the uh, property owner. This is a closer aerial photograph of the uh, subject property. So you'll note in the upper right hand corner of the uh, property outlined in red 
is the uh, existing residential dwelling on the subject property. And the remainder of the property, save for the area around the uh, dwelling, is uh, heavily uh, vegetated. There's no identified watercourses or wetlands on the subject property. So outside of the area that is uh, occupied by the uh, dwelling, it's, it's basically a forest. This is the zoning for the subject property, as well as the surrounding areas. So the subject property, uh, as well as the properties uh, which it immediately abuts, are zoned N1 or resource zone, which is a zone intended for uh, primarily for resource uses. Uh, you'll note in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, zoning map, there is uh, a few properties that have been zoned A2, which is the uh, rural mixed use zone. And there are a couple of properties that have been zoned, uh, spot zoned M3, rural industrial, which is a uh, zone that's intended to provide uh, industrial uses that are uh, necessary within the uh, rural areas of the municipality. This is a uh, future land use designation. Uh, so you'll note the subject property uh, as well as the surrounding properties are designated N resource, which is a uh, designation again, primarily for resource uses such as forestry or resource extraction, but do allow for limited uh, residential development uh, on properties with uh, road frontage. Uh, you'll note that the uh, properties in the upper right-hand corner, again, uh, that uh, fell within the A2 or rural mixed-use zone on the previous slide are designated agricultural. This is a photograph of the uh, subject property. This is the right-of-way uh, kind of entering into the, uh, the subject property. Uh, so you'll note the cleared portion there for the, uh, the roadway, which provides a vehicular access over the right-of-way, and then the forested areas surrounding it. This is a photograph of the existing residential dwelling that is found on the uh, subject property. It's a single unit residential uh, dwelling or single floor, single level residential dwelling in, in addition to being a single unit. This is a photograph kind of taken uh, kitty corner from the previous photograph. So you'll note the uh, single level residential dwelling on the left hand side, as well as some solar panels that provide uh, electricity to the uh, uh, dwelling. This is the uh, parking area for the uh, subject, uh, for the residential dwelling on the subject property. Again, the, the vegetation uh, surrounding the, uh, uh, surrounding the dwelling and a very similar photograph, uh, kind of providing an example of the uh, heavy vegetation surrounding the subject, uh, surrounding the dwelling on the subject property. With regard to the policies currently found within the municipal planning strategy. So currently the municipal planning strategy policy 3.6.4 council shall uh, zone as resource N1 lands that currently comprise large tracts of unfragmented forested lands that are intended to remain so and may contain limited community development. 3.6.5 permitted within the resource or N1 zone uh, currently, residential development only along public roads in existence on November 21st, uh, 2019. Outdoor recreational uses that require large tracts of undeveloped land and industrial development such as forestry, energy development, and aggregate uses that require large tracts of land. Taking a bit of a higher look uh, within the municipal planning strategy, Council shall uh, policy 2.2.1, identify areas located outside of growth centers as rural areas on Schedule A municipal structure, and these areas are intended to contain primarily agricultural and resource uses and the related industries, rural commercial uses, rural industrial uses, recreational uses, renewable energy uses, and limited residential development. 2.2.4, limit development on lots without frontage on public roads except within the shoreland designation. And 2.26, implement setbacks, coverage, and buffering controls to ensure that large tracts of undeveloped rural land are maintained. So as the policies in the municipal planning strategy currently state, uh, the uh, areas outside of growth center, rural areas are intended for primarily agricultural and resource uses, uh, related commercial and uh, industrial uses pertaining to rural activities recreational uses, but there is an acknowledgement that limited residential development can occur. Finally, uh, policy 
Planning 901 of the municipality, staff may bring forward minor MPS amendments to the MPS within a report regarding a requested land use bylaw amendment if such amendment provides for a more reasonable or effective land use bylaw amendment. The process for amending the municipal planning strategy would then be followed with no additional changes or requirements being placed on the applicant. So this policy enables council when, uh, or excuse me, enables staff when we receive a uh, requested land use bylaw amendment for which there is no uh, municipal planning strategy policy uh, to investigate at the direction of council amending the municipal planning strategy if it provides for a more reasonable or effective land use bylaw map amendment, which is the case in this particular application. With regard to the evaluation of the uh, specific application at hand, uh, there are a number of general criteria contained within the municipal planning strategy policy 5.3.7 that are used to evaluate all planning applications that come forward uh, to, the, uh, municipal, uh, to the municipality. Uh, this includes that the proposal is in keeping with the intent of the municipal planning strategy, meaning would it meet the goals and objectives of the municipal planning strategy, that there's no negative impact on financial impact on the municipality as a result of the proposed uh, amendment that the surrounding land uses are compatible with the proposed amendment, that when applicable, there is adequate school, recreation, and community facilities within a reasonable proximity to the subject property in question, that there would be no creation of traffic hazards or congestion as a result of the proposed amendment, that there would be adequate fire protection for the proposed use, that when applicable, there would be adequate sewer and water services um, that there would be no potential flooding or serious drainage problems as a result of the proposed amendment, that there would be, when applicable, no negative impacts on well fields or other groundwater supplies, that there'd be no reasonable chance of an increase for pollution, such as soil erosion or siltation of water courses, when applicable, that there would be no negative impacts on lake water quality or wetlands as a result of the proposed amendment, and that when applicable, there'd be no negative impacts on farming operations as a result of the proposed amendment. And finally, that the physical characteristics of the site, such as the grades, the soil, geological conditions, uh, water courses, marshes, bogs, swamps, and proximity to utility right of ways uh, would not conflict with the proposed uh, um, uh, amendment. With regard to the MPS amendment process, so the completed application has been received and council has authorized staff to investigate uh, minor changes to the municipal planning strategy to enable the land use bylaw text amendment to occur. We're at the very early stage of the process whereby the virtual PIM uh, is being recorded and will be available for 30 days for questions and comments uh, from September 2nd to October 2nd, 2021, as Councillor Harding has noted. Staff will then complete their review of the uh, application at hand, as well as look at uh, various policy directions in terms of amending the municipal planning strategy to enable the land use bylaw text amendment to occur. This would then proceed to the planning advisory committee, which would provide a recommendation on the specific application at hand uh, that has been uh, submitted by the applicant. A public participation meeting would then follow where members of the public have an opportunity to comment on any proposed changes to the municipal planning strategy as part of this application. This would then go back to the planning advisory committee for a recommendation on the proposed changes to the municipal planning strategy as a result of this application. It would then go to council for first reading where a public hearing would be scheduled. The public hearing would occur, which would allow the public a uh, final opportunity to comment on the finalized specific planning application as well as proposed changes to the municipal planning strategy to enable the application to occur. This would then be followed by second reading where council would make a decision on any proposed changes to the municipal planning strategy, as well as uh, the approval of the application at hand. And this would fi be finally be followed by a provincial review of any changes to the municipal planning strategy as the Municipal Government Act requires that the Department of Municipal Affairs review any changes to a municipal planning document uh, in, uh, to ensure that it reasonably complies with the statements of provincial interest. All properties within 500 feet will be notified again uh, for the public hearing in advance of the public hearing. 
and a public hearing is also advertised twice in the local newspaper preceding the public hearing. With that, I would invite members of the public to pose any questions or comments they have pertaining to this application specifically or any proposed changes to the municipal planning strategy. And I can be reached at uh, via telephone at 902-690-6173 via email wrobinson mushkat M-U-S-H-K-A-T, at countyofkings.ca or via the municipality's website, countyofkings.ca slash planning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Will. Uh, another thing I would like to say before we uh, come to the conclusion, uh, we ask the public if uh, you're calling or submitting any questions to provide your name and your civic address when you're contacting uh, Will. And 